Okay, so um, I'm Emily Heath. I'm currently SGR's office manager, but until recently I was working at a university in the north of England and I was the UCU Green Rep there as well. So I'm just going to present a few reflections on being a climate activist in an education setting and ways to, to promote that. Um, so nine ways in no particular order. My first recommendation is to unionise because you can be so much more effective if you've got hundreds or even thousands of people behind you and you can influence your union as well as helping your influence to your union to influence the, the green agenda that you want to push in your institution. So in universities and colleges, that would be the, the UCU. Um, if you're a student, it would be the NUS and they've got a separate charity called SOS UK, Students Organising for Sustainability, which is huge and has 30 staff and is doing brilliant work. So linking up with them is, is a good idea. And in schools, there's the National Education Union and other unions as well. For, and in all of these organisations, I think the climate agenda is, is, you know, getting more and more prominent and they're, uh, they're doing more and more on it. So join in with those activities if you can. Secondly, just demand transparency from your institution because you need to know what the current state of play is in terms of the institution's emissions um, and, and what they're planning to do or what they could do and who makes the decisions, how do you influence them? So transparency on all of those things with ideally monitoring of all the different types of emissions which are called scope one, two and three. I won't, I won't go into detail about what that means but different categories of emissions need to be thought about not just the kind of the easy, obvious ones. Thirdly, embed climate education, climate action and climate justice across the whole curriculum, because it isn't just things like environmental science or geography where this is relevant. Any subject can have climate action embedded in it. And importantly, try to link together the, the themes of decolonizing the curriculum with decarbonizing and democratizing, because all of these things are very much interlinked. You can't really achieve one without, without the other two. Fourthly, I think this is perhaps the biggest barrier that I've seen to effective climate action in educational institutions. It's just that everybody is so busy, so focused on all the million other things that they should be doing. They haven't really got time to, to focus on, okay, how do we create institutional behaviour change um, in terms of emissions? So I'm suggesting here a few ways to get a bit more time, either for yourself if you're in that position or for other people if you're able to. Um, arguing for a bit of your workload allocation to be dedicated to climate de action development, sustainability work. Um, as a union rep, you can sometimes negotiate for some facility time, so paid time to do this work. I think most green reps in UCU only have like zero to one hours a week, so it's not huge, but it's a start and, it, and uh, you know, it, it can increase over time if we show that it's making a difference. Um, some people have effectively used sabbatical leave to concentrate on aspects of their role that can help develop sustainability action, um, argue for the creation of more sustainability jobs in your institution. I'm sure no university has got enough people working on this, um, same in schools and colleges. Argue for more training and continuing professional development opportunities in terms of sustainability. Build it into your institution's promotion criteria because that will help some people that are kind of motivated by trying to get promoted if they can see that they're going to get recognition for that work um, create awards if if the ones that already exist aren't aren't meeting your needs for for people that are showing leadership or institutions that are showing leadership in this area and for students build it into the courses so that they actually get credit for working on projects that directly help to improve the the institution's sustainability um, so that, that's a good way to get some, get some work done for free by the students, but for them to benefit from it as well in terms of counting towards their, their degree or whatever. And finally, if you really are struggling for time, consider, I know this isn't possible for everybody, but you, know, you can make a request to reduce your working hours and, and work more flexibly to allow a bit more time for voluntary work. And that's certainly how I really managed to um, do a lot of climate activism in my university by working part time. Fifth tip is to use pledges and uh, petitions, even though there are far too many petitions in the world already, but it is quite a good way of getting a sort of easy engagement and getting people to commit to doing something. And there is evidence that people are more likely to do something when they've publicly said that they're going to do it. 
protect the right to protest. A lot of universities are cracking down on protest as well as the government trying to make it harder and um, criminalize it. So resist that if you can. And publicly support climate action by other activists so that you're helping to create a, a sort of motivating culture and, and a culture of new social norms where climate activism is valued. Challenge greenwash, challenge waste and things like academic flying, which there's far too much of. Some of it might be necessary, but much of it isn't. Um, and we can show leadership in refusing to do it or, or reducing it, making pledges and calling it out when it's unnecessary. And finally, be brave and persevere because it is really difficult. And, um, there, you know, I don't know all the answers. I'm sure nobody does, but we can't let that stop us. So just give it a go. So thank you very much. Um, we've probably got maybe a minute or two for questions if anybody has any.